Greetings in the precious name of Jesus. Jesus is alive and well. We welcome you to Choices from our beautiful country, a place where you can discover the mighty Kaichur Falls, the highest single drop waterfall in the world, approximately 740 feet high, delivering about 23,000 cubic feet of water per second. Yes, this is beautiful Guyana. Draw the family close together. Invite a friend. Shout out to them. Let them know Choices is on. God bless you. Stay tuned. This evening we want to uh, discuss the story of Christmas. Um, lots of people are still grappling with what Christmas uh, really means. Um, for some people, it is about the warmth and love of our families, uh, it's celebration at our homes. For others, Christmas has to do with loving people, um, peace and goodwill on earth uh, towards all men. Some people, Christmas means the birthday of Jesus and therefore we celebrate uh, his birth. But Christmas is something bigger than that. You know, it's about, it's about hope. It's about salvation, it's about redemption. It's about a plan to connect man back to God. So when we celebrate Christmas, we are really celebrating the greatest truth of our faith. And that is the incarnation. Christ, the Word becoming flesh for the purpose of the redemption of mankind. But you know, this story did not start in the Gospels. Way back in Genesis 3.15, it says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed, and she shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the first prophecy of the coming of Christ. Not only is this prophecy of his birth, but it's a prophecy of his work, his work of redemption. So we want to discuss this topic this morning. Gentlemen. It gives us great pleasure at this time to, you know, just reflect on what Jesus would have done for humanity as we reflect on this scripture found in Genesis 3.15. This came about as a result of disobedience. And God's plan for man was one that wasn't one that was reactive, but it was a proactive plan. Because the word of God declares that even while we were yet sinners, mm -hmm. Christ died for us. And so God did not wait for us to come to a place of perfection. He had a plan to redeem man unto himself. And this plan could only be fulfilled through his son, Jesus Christ. The word becoming flesh and dwelling among men to redeem lost man to God. So in spite of what people might try to do, let's say, for example, um, the, 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 the whole aspect of the commercialization of Christmas. It is not about that. It is about redeeming man to God, bringing man back into a right relationship with God through his son Jesus Christ. Let's take pick up this story in Genesis chapter 3. And permit me to read a few verses starting from verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say, You must not eat from the tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We must not eat from the fruit from the tree in the garden. But God did say, You must not eat from it, from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. Verse 4. 
you will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasant to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he did eat it and ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made covering for themselves. Then the man and the woman heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. But the Lord called out to, them, to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked, and so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. And then the, the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I yet. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you among all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And verse 15, And I will put empty between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Now, in an environment like this where laws have been violated and broken, you would expect that only judgment will prevail. But in the midst of all of the instructions that God had given, being disobeyed, you still, we still find in the middle God's, God's grace. We still find that God's love. We still find God's promise of hope. It, it is hard to imagine in such an environment where the woman is deceived, the man follows after her, Satan is rejoicing. Why is he rejoicing? Because he knows according to the law, once there is disobedience against the law, they should be dead. However, God comes in the middle. And here the promise that God gives. And this is the root of Christmas. He says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman. And between your offspring and her offspring, he will crush your head and you shall strike his heel. Which simply means that God is a God of hope. It tells me that, that it's like the, the, the shepherd going after his sheep that is lost. Like the story we, we, we know in the, in the New Testament about the prodigal son, is like the father looking out for his children, providing hope. Christmas is all about hope, and it started way back in Genesis. You know, I looked at this thing and I saw a war break. Because God dealt with this issue from the devil right back up. And he said clearly to the woman, this battle will be between your seed and this enemy. And when we hear, you know, joy to the world, the Lord has come, we know that God has fulfilled that prophecy in His Son, Jesus Christ. Because redemption can only come where blood is shed. Without the shedding of blood, there remains no remission for sin. So Jesus' entrance into the world is a fulfillment of the prophecy God declared 
in Genesis 3 and 15. And it is something for us to rejoice about because the hope of salvation has been presented to us. Christmas is not about black cake and all these kinds of things that we get excited about. But let us focus on sin that was committed and redemption that was brought to us via the entrance of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, into this world. I like the concept you raised about war break because <laughs> in verse 15, the, verse, the first line speaks about, about war. He says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. So it right away you can see that there will be there is a clash. You can we can actually recognize that whatever this woman is is going to produce, in essence, is speaking about the promised son, Jesus coming, and how he's going to die. There will be there will be a collision of forces. How he's going to be killed? He's going to be crucified, but he's going to rise again on the third day, and the enemy's yoke over mankind, his bondage over sin, this ability to accuse and condemn man, claiming that they are justified for death, all of that will be broken through the love and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a powerful story. You know, the statement that clearly we see a distinction. God is making a distinction right away. Um, between uh, Satan and himself. Uh, mm -hmm. There is no coalition, mm -hmm. there is no uh, allegiance, or, or there is no um, connection anymore. God is saying, look, for this thing that you have done, yeah, yeah. I am clearly going to make a distinction <laughs> between your seed and my seed. And notice he did not say, and the, the center of this whole fall is based upon Adam. And God never mentioned the seed of Adam. He mentioned your seed, which specifically speaks about the virgin birth, Thank about you, Christ yes. coming, yes. not born of a man, yeah. you know. And so sometimes we people become confused and they say all kinds of things. But if, if he's God, he could not be born of a man. And so a clear distinction is being made. But, but what I really like about this distinction also, it talks about bruising and crushing. You know, you, 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 to my mind, you easily you can recover from a bruise. You know, but a crush, <laughs> you know, crush, it talks about a lethal situation. And so this whole thing, and we're talking about wars, right? Somebody <laughs> mentioned war. So if it's war you want, it's war you'll get. And so the word is clearly stating that you will bruise his heel, yes, when he comes. And this whole bruising is connected to the cross yes. for your salvation, yes. for our salvation, for our hope. And, the, you know, at the end of the day, the crushing will take place even at the cross because there is where Satan was defeated. You know, um, we think about the children of Israel in, the, in Egypt in bondage. And Pharaoh think that he had a hold over them. But God's concern for his people caused him to reach out to them. And it's the same way the world was in chaos. And God now, this implicit plan of God to redeem man was put into effect, was prophesied long before it took place. And God was bringing hope to the human race because through sin we were separated or eliminated from God. No longer we had a relationship, but God wanted a relationship because God is a God of relationship. And so through the Lord Jesus Christ, he was going to bring back, purchase the life of man, <coughs> purchase our lives, our lives back, paying a price that we couldn't pay because the wages of sin was death. And so God, through this plan, was going to redeem mankind from lost humanity. We who were in darkness would have seen a light. This light would come to save people from their sins. Sometimes we, we think Christmas is just about the fun and the frolic, but it's more than that. It's the redemption of man. The plan came into effect 
and it wasn't finished there because Jesus was going to die for our sins. And so we had we have we who were in darkness now have hope. The world have hope. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Today you and I, you and I could stand tall because of what Jesus did. It is so important for us to embrace that relationship. Because um like it is said in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his best, and that is what love does. You see, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving, and God demonstrated to us the importance. What better gift to mankind than selling his son Jesus Christ to pay a price that we ourselves could not pay? So when we embrace him, when we come into that right relationship with him, we are made right with his father. Because Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming down to the father but by me. So this plan of redemption, just to bring back man into a right relationship with God, was fulfilled through his son Jesus Christ. And we must understand, we cannot really separate Christmas from Easter because they two, the two goes together. Jesus had to be crucified in order for this plan of redemption to be fulfilled. And so when we understand what we are involving, what God would have done for us through his son Jesus Christ, and we embrace him, we stand to benefit. You know, when we look back at that portion of scripture in, in Genesis 3.15, and we heard the term war break, but in the scripture, it already points to who the victor is, <laughs> right? Yeah. We have no need to wonder who is going to come out victorious at the end. This scripture already points to who the victor is, right? So when we hold on to Jesus Christ, we are on the winning side. The battle has already been won. Yes. It, it is clear. But I, I would like to explain this war. It's not only a physical war it's not really a battle where you see battle on a battlefield it is a battle of emotions and will now listen what the what is the meaning of enmity that is the state or feeling of being actively opposed or hostile to someone there is hostility between Darkness and light. There's hostility between Jesus and the devil. The devil wanted to destroy Jesus even before he started to redeem mankind from their sin. The devil said to him, listen, if you would only bow down and worship me, I will give you all that you see. But this is a lesson to us that we have got to be like our Lord and Savior who has been redeemed and we have got to stand and focus and not allow the devil to wage war in our minds and we've got to keep our mind, will and emotions covered by this precious blood of Jesus. And so this, we walk in the flesh. this is, the, is a true description of the incarnation of Christ. Yeah. There is God becoming flesh and dwelling among, among us. There is a clear description in Genesis 3.15 of God coming into the world through a virgin's birth. You ask, why is the great celebration at Christmas? The great celebration is intended to celebrate the fulfillment of that prophetic word of God becoming flesh and uh, breaking the yokes of the enemy. It doesn't only describe, in that same small few lines, it doesn't only describe God coming, it also describes God suffering, Jesus suffering. There is the, 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 the fight between the enemy and Christ. But it also says that Christ is the winner. Yeah. Christ is the victor. And so it tells you that he will be crucified, he will be killed, but he will rise again. Why would all of this be necessary? Why? 
because the yokes of sin must be broken. And the yokes of sin can only be broken through the shedding of blood. So Jesus came to shed his blood so that you and I may have life and life more abundantly. And for this reason, we rejoice. We celebrate, celebrate in this season. You thank, know, thank God for that abundant life. You know, it is so important for us to understand that God, the plan that we're talking about, the plan of redemption, God just did not come up with a plan after all this happened. Uh, throughout scripture, we read God showing us his plan of redemption. And in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14 reads from the NIV, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Even as we look further in the, in the book of Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5 says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. So indeed, this plan of redemption, the plan of salvation, the plan of hope, one of my colleagues posited earlier that you cannot separate Christmas from Easter. It's just seeing how God is giving us a total plan, a plan of redemption. God is not taken by surprise. And, and uh, I mean, when you look at the, at the love of God, sometimes you, 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 you just become highly emotional. You know, um, one songwriter who's gone, he said, man, he could have wiped us all out and start all over again. Um, but the love of God, it, it's so powerful and so, even before the foundation of the world, this mm -hmm. lamb was slain, yes. you know, for our, um, for our redemption that, that, that we might be, um, the gap between God and man might be, might be bridged again. And so, the blood of Jesus is so powerful and it is sufficient and the superior and so it is because of this seed that we talked about in Genesis 3.15 we are here today um, think about it God actually had this plan to take us back to our original state yeah. and the time will come when we will be in our original state and so we really want to let persons out there know that there is hope Christmas is about hope. It is about salvation. It is about you living for Christ. It is about you. It is about you living a life that God has designed for you to live. I look at the language that is being used, you know, to spill hope to mankind. Hear what the word of God says. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. I think about somebody just tapping me. But at the end of it, that person will be annihilated because of the work of Christ. So I have hope because it is not that like if he is going to strike and nothing is going to happen, but his head will be crushed. And I can now see the light and walk in victory because of what God has done or what he's doing today. This crushing talks about complete separation from sin because of the finished work. Even though he would strike and think that he would have had victory over us, God's plan of redemption would come into effect at the crucifixion because he would rise again on the third day. God was working for his people. God is concerned about his people. You see, we human beings, we are created in the image and after the likeness of God. And God's people were consumed by sin and there had to be a redeemer. That's why this child had to be born. Listen to this. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son whom he 
appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he uphold the universe by the word of his power. After making purification, yes, after making purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of his majesty on high. That is why he came. He came with this mandate to make purification. That's why God selected <coughs> this child, his only begotten. You are my son today. I have begotten you, the word of God says in Hebrews 1. So we see that without this birth, there would have been no death and there would have been no remission of sin. That's why we are free today. Even as you, 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 know, you look at this program and you contemplate, some folks, you know, you may have an issue with the virgin birth. I believe you would have presented a case for why we believe in this virgin birth, the seed of the woman speaks of the virgin birth. So Christmas has nothing to do with Santa Claus. It's amazing how people would rather believe a lie than the truth. Just read Isaiah chapter 7 and read Matthew chapter 21. You're going to see about the virgin birth. Well, I rejoice and we rejoice over the fact that God could be so concerned about us mm -hmm. that he could send his son even after man would have sinned. You would have thought that God would have attempted to destroy mm -hmm. mankind after sin. And that was the intention of the enemy. But God decided to show forth his grace. The grace of God is the passion of God to show all of his goodness with others. God delights today to do good for you and for me. And so let us make ourselves available to benefit from that good. I close by quoting Psalms 100, verse 5. Here it says, Enter in, in, into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and praise his holy name. For the Lord is good, and his love endureth forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. Jesus loves you. Let's celebrate this Christmas. God bless you. We thank you for being part of Choices. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly for any of our regular weekly services. I am Salisha on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.